Welcome to the Toyota School Board Show, sponsored by Thomasville Toyota, here on the Thomasville dealership floor. We do every Tuesday here. We're in week eight. Bobby Latmore here, along with Chris Guyton. Chris, good to see you, buddy. Glad to be back. Glad to be You've back. been gone a little bit, haven't you, from the school board show? Yeah, I decided to give Jesse a little breathing room, let him have his little deal, but now we got to put him on the shelf. And we got to put him on the shelf. Yeah, a little we, we got to zip him up. Uh, oh, yeah. I like that. I like. Well, no, Jesse's good though. Jesse has fun. He does. He's a, he's a good guy. He likes to have fun. But you know, when Baconton, bacon. yeah, you know <laughs> that that whole Baconton deal. Enough Baconton. Enough Baconton. Well, anything you know, you went. We were at the uh, South uh, West Georgia. Uh, Southwest Georgia Brookwood game last Friday night. See anything that you like? See anything that surprised you a little bit? Both teams were really competitive. Mm -hmm. uh, I did like that. And the fans were, I mean, I didn't expect the fans to be much different, but they packed the house. Yeah, they did. They, they did. had a good they showing. The house. Yeah, well, homecoming there for Southwest Georgia this last Friday night, so we were good to see that happen over there for them. Looking at the scores based on, and I know you're going to come up with one right off the bat that surprised you, but what surprised you last week in week eight? As far as that particular game or week eight period? Really, everything. Everything surprised uh, you about week eight. Well, there were, there were some things that, that kind of stood out. But here's, as far as week eight goes, mm -hmm. it's hard for me to look at week eight mm -hmm. and say this stands out to me. Right. Because I know coming up this week, there's something brewing on the horizon. Really? We'll get yeah, into that yeah, here a little bit. Yeah, it, so it's hard for me to focus back. I, I'm like an anxious kid in the candy store. R wow. We're going to have to find out what's going on here. But you know what? Week 8 surprised me too. Blowouts and some surprising upsets. So I'll tell you what, Chris. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll get into all of this here on the Toyota School Board Show, sponsored by Thomasville Toyota. Thomasville Toyota, the happy place. At Farm Credit, our roots run deep in this rich Georgia soil. We are the nation's leading provider of credit to farmers and farm businesses. And we know what it takes to grow your business. We've closed more loans on the hood of a pickup truck than some bankers will in a lifetime. We're proud of our history. Prouder still to finance the dreams of farmers, landowners, and agribusinesses. We're Farm Credit. We're here to help you grow. It's a great place for sports training and keeping in shape. Come to Fitness Life for your workout. It's convenient and it's open 24 hours a day. Follow your dreams, find your passion here at Fitness Life. Check out Sunbelt Trophy on East Jackson Street for all your award ideas. We carry trophies for all sports, plaques, medals, resins, and beautiful crystals and acrylics. With on-site engraving, check out our showroom for your one-stop shopping celebration need. Also, check out our new custom school award only at Sunbelt Trophy, 912 East Jackson Street, Thomasville, 229-228-1187. Welcome back, everybody, here to the Toyota Scoreboard Show, sponsored by Thomasville Toyota. Bobby Latmore along with Chris Guyton today. Chris, let's talk about the game of the week last week, starting right off the bat. SGA, Brookwood, you said it was a pretty exciting game. It was a pretty exciting game. It was back and forth offensively and defensively. Not a lot of high-end scoring in that first right. half, but, you know, the defensive struggle, it was, it was a good thing to see. It was a good thing to see. I thought both teams were very competitive. Right. Um, you know, it's not a high-scoring offense as either one of them. But when they do get it rolling, they can get it rolling, can't they? Right. And, you know, running that style of offense with all the, the option plays and the misdirections, you really have to follow the ball, and, and it forces that defense to play assignment football. You know, one thing, too, Roger pointed out, and during the game, if you guys saw the game, or you'll see the game next here on the Cool Channels, um, is that they work with kind of ran the same play over and over a couple times, didn't they? They did, but... <laughs> they were successful with it. That was, that's the whole point. The, the S, uh, SGA did not stop them. Right. So uh, my question was, why did you start running that play? 
Well, you know, you had an opportunity. You know, you started playing catch-up football there. You have to play catch-up. I mean, that's the thing with Brookwood. The defense is not going to hold anybody because your offense is your defense. So they're going to get tired. Right. So they're going to give up points, but you've got to be able to keep up when you give up the points. And ball control is one thing, but you've got to be able to score if you're going to hold the ball that long. Right. right. So, you know, I, 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 there's a, they're young. The Brookwood Warriors are young. SGA's got a good football team. I'm a little surprised they haven't opened it up a little bit. they got a pretty good quarterback over there. What did you see? As far as SGA, I like, you know, they had, they had the good running back. The, the Will defense, Farrell. Will Ferrell. Yep. He, he played sound. Um, I, I like the energy that SGA played with when they right. when they came out on the field. They were trying to send the message: We're going to be physical. If you're coming into our house, you're going to know you've been here. Yep. So I'm sure the next day there were some uh, Brookwood players that mm-hmm. were maybe a little bandaged up, but yep. SGA wanted to send that message early, and I think they did. Did I say Will Ferrell? You did say Will Ferrell, and I was just going to let it go. What, why? <laughs> what did that come? Will Warren. <laughs> yes. It's Will Warren. Will Ferrell. Never. Will Ferrell doesn't have any more high school eligibility. Stop laughing at me over there. <laughs> I, got, I got customers laughing at me all over the place right now. Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell's not even in this side of the state uh, country, is he? He's out there in the West Coast. He's in a higher tax, tax bracket than us, too. You think? Yeah. So, uh, Will Warren, by the way, it could be Will Ferrell, you never know, Will Warren, but uh, he had a good game. He still had a good game uh, the other night, number five uh, for SGA. He did, and not four, to take away. Four. I'm not, getting it all wrong tonight. Number and four. I'm disagreeing with you. You are just having a good time today, aren't you? <laughs> you know, not, not to take away from Brookwood, because I, I thought they, they did some things uh, really well as mm-hmm. far as moving the ball. Right. Um, some of the, the play calling in the first half was great. Mm-hmm. I question some of it in the second half, but also you have to put some of that blame on the players because there was missed opportunities. Right. I mean, you, you, you fumble here, you, you have a drop ball there, overthrow a few players, mm-hmm. you know, wide open players. So. Yep. So it's just thing they have to learn. Yeah. I think Brookwood's got a good team. SGA's got a good team. It'd be interesting to see, you know, I, I, I think SGA make the playoffs, see where Brookwood makes the playoffs or not. We'll see. Yeah. But that, you know, two good teams. We had a great game of the week. That'll be next here on the Cool Channel, so make sure you stay tuned for that as well. Let's talk about the other GISA team. Westwood having a big night against Sherwood Christian up there. Westwood coming up 42 to nothing over Sherwood Christian from Albany. Westwood's just on a roll, man. They took that loss at Stratford at the beginning of the year, broke the streak. Now, they started their own new one, haven't they? Yes, and I, I think their mascot should be a steamroller because that's, <laughs> that's what they had got going on right now. They're steamrolling the competition. 42 points. 42 to nothing. And your defense just stands there and said, this is our line. We yes. dare you to cross it. T.J. Edor had a great night. He rushed for, I think, 167 yards and three touchdowns, four touchdowns in that game. So Edor is just he's phenomenal. And, you know, two of those touchdowns were one plays. And that's what he did against Brookwood two weeks ago. I mean, just Westwood just got a quick hitting offense. They hit you hard and they go. Yeah, and that that makes it really hard for the opposing team, especially mentally. Mentally is right. That's a good point. Because you get hit hard and quick and fast on one play, you're deflated because you're geared up for that one play and all of a sudden they beat you on it. What do you do next? I mean, before you know it, you're down 14, you're down 21, and it's like, wait a second, how do we stop the bleeding? It's tough. It's tough to stop the bleeding. Last week, Colquitt County was off, but they got a big game. They got to go to Brunswick this week. So we wish the Packers nothing but the best of luck there. Now let's get into some teams that um, we're, we're surprised about. Or I'm going to – you're going to be – I'm going to get you on this. So let's make a deal time here. Okay. Here on the scoreboard, Toyota scoreboard show. But uh, I'll get your opinion on something here. Okay. Cairo beating Worth County, I mean, that much – you saw the score of Cairo 42 to nothing over Worth County. There's another 42 points, 42 to zero this week. That's what been that was surprising about me is the blowout. Sounds like a theme song, huh? 42 Big time. points. 42 to nothing. Yeah. Well, we've seen Cairo play a few times this year, and what we've been saying about them is they played great the first half, or they played great the second half, but they haven't had a complete game. Right. And I think in this game, they finally put it all together. Yes, they, they clicked did. on offense, defense, and special teams. You know, offense scored big for Cairo this week. Worth County gave them some uh, help, though. First play of the game for Worth County, they fumbled on their own 25-yard line. Next play, P.J. Day, uh, Davis takes it in for a 24-25 yard touchdown run. And before the game even, you get, you know, settled into your seat as a fan, it's already 7 nothing. You haven't even sat down with your Coke and your popcorn yet? I mean, there's still people backed up in the gate. It's already 7 nothing. Yeah. But, again, that goes to let's hit them quick, let's send the message, 
and, and see how the other team reacts when the pressure's on. It surprised me. I thought Worth County would show up. They've been playing good here the last few weeks. They lost a heartbreaker to America's Sumter two weeks ago. Uh, they had a week off last week to get ready for Cairo, but to come out like this after a week off, not a good show. Yeah, and honestly, I did not expect it to be that bad. I was taking Cairo in the win, mm -hmm. but I did not know it was going to be 42 to nothing. Oh, you know, last year's game between Worth County and Cairo was an overtime victory for Cairo. So I was expecting something close this year. I mean, not 42 points from Cairo. Defense yeah. scored again. Yeah. Defense is tough. P.J. Davis, not only that touchdown, but he scored two more in the first half. It was 35 nothing at halftime. What, their defense are averaging like 14 points a game in the uh, last few weeks? You know, they're, they're, the, the Cairo defense is actually outscoring some of the offenses here in southwest Georgia. Yes, they are. Yes, they <laughs> are. Other teams. So that's amazing for that defense there in Cairo. They don't just take it away. They take it to the house. Oh, they go, man. Yeah. Uh, that pick sixes last week. I think it was a fumble recovery for a touchdown this week. So, I mean, 42 points. Cairo's rolling. That's that puts them 3-0 and in the region right now, and they are in the driver's seat to win Region 1 4A this year in the new classifications. What a good way to start that for Cairo. Absolutely. Especially after the beginning of the year. They were kind of sluggish here at the beginning of the year. Well, it's like we also said that they faced a lot of A's. <laughs> <laughs> they faced a lot of A's. They did. But the, I, considering the number of A's they faced, they handled themselves well. Yes. I mean, they weren't really, except for Thomas County, there were no big blowouts. Right. I mean, but, you know, the Bainbridge game, they were in the Bainbridge game. Right. To kickoff return by Bainbridge. Right allowed uh, Bainbridge to get back into the game. Special teams hurt Cairo that game, but you know, they've been in every game. Yes, they have. Even the games they lost, you look set for Central. Yes. And, except, and I know you're gonna wanna mention that. Well, I'm not gonna mention <laughs> how big the margin of victory was, but you know, ran into a Cairo fan this week. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. They wanted to bring up the 1992 season with the state champions. Cairo beat you guys that year? Yes, but we got the ring. Yeah, you got the ring. Yeah. So you can you can say that about that, huh? Yeah, I hear you. Well, good. Uh, always something. It's all you never graduate around here in Southwest Georgia. You're always no, I, traditions and rivalries. All you, you live with it. You live all the all these years with it. That's that's fantastic. That's what it's all about. A big surprise for me this week, and we talked about it on the Friday night huddle. And Roger Cunningham talked a lot about it, but he thought Terrell County, actually you did too, was going to beat Mitchell County this week. But unbelievable score, Mitchell County woke up. They've been, I don't know if they've been hibernating. The Eagles have been too high in the mountains and they came down to get their prey this week, but 47 to 14, Mitchell County over Terrell County. Good job, Eagles. You know, sometimes you just don't want to wake the sleeping giant. Unbelievable. It woke some, Terrell County woke something up up there. Yeah. And you know, Coach Huff was saying in the paper that he said his team didn't even show up. You're, I, you, I don't know. Mitchell County obviously did. It was Mitchell County against the Terrell County cheerleaders? I don't know. I think it was maybe the band. The band? Oh. Uh, I don't know, but just unbelievable game. And, of course, uh, the guy that everybody loves here on the show, Jaquan Williams, uh, for number 21 for Mitchell mm -hmm. County. I mean, we saw the game against Mitchell and Miller. This guy was an all-star, instant all-star with everybody. Yeah. The I, way he played in that game. I think I want to get his autograph. And no question about it. He finished the game with 122 rushes, rushing yards on 13 carries. So he had a big night as well. He also had two touchdowns in that, in that game. Um, Terrell County was supposed to be a little bit better coming into this. It, what's that say about that whole region now, Region 1, with Terrell County going down like they did right now? They didn't just go down. They, they went down hard. As far as that region goes, it's, is there really a true leader there? I mean, is the competition that close? Or is it, I'm, I'm at a loss on that one. I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll just have to see. Yeah. We'll have to see. Another one team in that region that had a big night, well, against a team that's still up and coming. You know, they're struggling a little bit right now, but Seminole County 48-14 to over Stewart County. I mean, a lot of it was 47-14 Mitchell over Terrell, 48-14 Seminole over Stewart. There's a little trend here. They're allowing the fourth quarter to happen, I guess, with the JV and letting the other team score, you know, the northern yeah. team score. 14 points in this region. I don't know. Well, you, you don't want them to go back on that bus ride, you know, feeling that bad. <clears throat> uh, everybody scored for Stu uh, Seminole County in this game at 48 points. Indians now go to 2-0 and in region. They're 4-2 and overall. Javante Smith had two, three touchdowns uh, for the Seminoles, and each one of these players had a touchdown. Alex Fudge, Javon, Siobhan Wiggins, Jakari Martin, and Brendel Kimbrell. So, you know, you didn't, we didn't mention the freshman. He's not in right now. He's, he was held out of this game, so hopefully he's got a little calf injury 
So he'll be all right next week going against a big team up there. I think Seminole plays Calhoun next week, so up there. So they're going to need that freshman for that yeah, running they, game they, up there. I think they made so, a good choice resting them. I think so, too. Well, against a team like that. Right. I mean, you know, Stewart County, they're, they're coming by. You know, they're, they're competition. Right. You know, good game for Seminole. Coach Ingram was quoted uh, after the game to uh, a cohort of ours that he could have scored 100. But uh, <laughs> he, he pulled the dogs back here in the second half. But that's the way Seminole County rides. They, they score quick. They the first half's done. They pull, a, pull the reins back in the second half, and they go. Yeah. You get that lead. That's my theme for the show. You, you get the lead, and then you pull back a little bit. Put the other guys in, get some experience, mm -hmm. build a little depth. Good strategy, right? No, especially when you have that luxury. When you got that luxury, yeah. is right. I mean, <clears throat> is it good during the rest of the season to do that though? Because you want to get your first team to you know play the whole four quarters right. of football. But I think also when you practice, you know, you practice and you condition for the long haul for the entire game. But you also want to get those younger guys the experience, right? Because who knows when you get deeper into the season or when you make the playoffs, right? If someone gets hurt, you're going to have to put somebody in, and you don't football. want them to be green. Yep. A lot of football still to be played. We're already in week eight. You know, there's four or five more weeks here of football, depending on what, where you're at, how many games you have played already here in southwest Georgia. So I'll tell you what, let's take another break. When we come back, let's talk about some more about that region and a couple other regions here in southwest Georgia here on the Toyota Scoreboard Show, sponsored by Thomasville Toyota. This is so easy. Shopping from home, from your office, from your phone at thomasvilletoyota.com. Shop for brand new Toyotas or look at hundreds of pre-owned vehicles. Get approved in seconds with one click. And during business hours, live chat with one of our internet specialists. So shop easy at the happy place, thomasvilletoyota.com. Thomasville Toyota, where you have home happy. At Farm Credit, our roots run deep in this rich Georgia soil. We are the nation's leading provider of credit to farmers and farm businesses. And we know what it takes to grow your business. We've closed more loans on the hood of a pickup truck than some bankers will in a lifetime. We're proud of our history. Prouder still to finance the dreams of farmers, landowners, and agribusinesses. We're Farm Credit. We're here to help you grow. Sunbelt Trophy on East Jackson Street is your one-stop shop for all your celebration needs. Now, just for high schools, check out our sister company, DiscountVarsityAwards.com, where you'll find amazing discounts on beautiful full-color awards custom designed for your school. Check us out at DiscountVarsityAwards.com or call 229-228-1187. Only at Sunbelt Trophy in Thomasville. My name is Dana Copeland. I am Director of Athletic Development here at Kojai Athletic Company in Thomasville, Georgia. Next level training. back everybody to the Toyota scoreboard show sponsored by Thomasville Toyota Bobby Labmore here along with Chris Guyton and Chris you know he's not here he's not here this morning who would you speak be speaking of Mr. Jesse Small the biggest fan for the Baconton Blazers up there at Baconton they went to Alpharetta last Friday night to play St. Francis Heart what a heartbreak to travel all that way and lose on a two-point conversion 22 to 21 Bakington was there. They showed up. They showed up. Uh, they definitely, just like Jesse said, they, they have some fight in them. And they're going to, one of these days, they're, they're going to get it all together. But they're getting close. They're getting close. Uh, Quentin Smith, uh, two touchdowns for Bakington. Brock Pinson had the other touchdown uh, rushing for the Blazers. But uh, 30 seconds left on a fourth and 13, they score and then get the two-point conversion. You know, sometimes the cars are just stacked against you. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> they go to three and five. I, everybody was rooting for them this week. Go to four and four, have a 500 season right now. Looks like they're going to have to wait two more games to have that happen. But they've got some big games coming up here pretty soon in the next couple of weeks, and we'll talk about that coming up here shortly. But, I mean, Baconton, they were there. They had it. 
Bakington's, I, I still think Bakington's a lot better than what most people give them credit for. I think so too. Yeah. I really do. Um, it, it, you know, Coach Hughes up there at, at Bakington took over this year for Coach Palmer. Both of them are still on staff up there. Both great coaches. It's just, they just, I don't know if it's not so much to work with, but it's just that, that it, the consistency of being up one week and down another week, up another week, that's just part of the program that's starting out. But I, I think that in the long run, that's going to help them. Um, adversity, you know, especially when you go through some adversity, you, you learn how to deal with it, how to cope with it. Right. But each year now, from now on, I mean, last year they had, last year they had one or two wins. I, th I think one was a forfeit last year. Um, so they had two wins last year. This year they got three wins. They got better. Right. So each year now they're going to get better. They got better this year. They improved on their record. So congratulations. But just keep going. Let's make it a 500 year this year. And, man, that will be something to really celebrate for in Bakington. We'll never get Jesse down. No, no, not at all. Well, I, here's another thing. I ran into a uh, Pelham Hornet. Uh -huh. And uh, he was talking about how Pelham had been doing this season. And I said, well, wait a minute. I said, didn't one of their losses come against Bakington? I mean, one of their wins come against Bakington? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, well, let's look at Bakington's record and look at Pelham's record. Now, look at that comparison. And he turned around and walked away, didn't he? Yes, he, <laughs> he walked away quietly. <laughs> quietly is right. Well, speaking of Pelham, not a very good night up there in Pelham. Uh, they hosted this week, again, it, it's just, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with Pelham. If there's anything wrong with them or not, I just don't know if they gelled or not. But they played Cook this week in a 42 to 10. There's that 42 again. Yeah. A big week here, and maybe get 42. But uh, 42 to 10, Pelham loses to Cook. But Cook is strong, you know. And he knew Pelham wasn't going to do much in this game, but still to be a little bit more competitive if you want to compete in this Double A region. I mean, I, I think Pelham. Pelham has the twos offensively. Right. Because with the style of offense they run, you need two or three good players. Right. They have a decent quarterback. They have a decent running back. And I wish I could call the kid's name the receiver. Very tall kid, mm -hmm. good hands. But you got to be able to give him the ball. Right. you got to be able to get him right. the ball. Right. You, about, you have to be able to get him the ball to give some balance to that offense. Right. Because when we've seen a play, you see teams stacking a lot. Right. You know, eight, nine men in the box. Okay, now beat that. Right. That's what most teams are saying to him. Well, Cook coming into this game was number seven in Class 2A for the state. Fitzgerald was number three. Brooks County was number one last week. So it's um, interesting to see, you know, how that region is going to come out. But Pelham's way down on the bottom of that, of that classification right now because right. of who they are. You know, they stood, personally, they should still be in Class 1A. But unfortunately, with the numbers and the reclassification this year, they got bumped up to 2A. So, you know, that's where they are right now. Coach Carroll's going to do a good job. Right. No question about it up there at Pelham. He's going to do a good job. It's just right now a lot of growing pains coming through this new region, playing these new teams. And I think they're, they're just backed up against the wall right now. And I think you also hit the nail on the head earlier when you said the team just needs to jail. I, right. I, from being around them a the couple of times that we have been around mm -hmm. them this year, I didn't see it. Right. And I, I think that's one thing they're missing. One thing, you know, they came out, you know, we saw them against the Seminole mm -hmm. County game a couple of weeks ago, about three weeks ago, and they came out throwing the ball. Mm -hmm. And they did all right against a pretty good Seminole defense. Right. You get in that caliber to where you're a 2A school now, to where you got to go mm -hmm. against that Cook defense, you got to go against Fitzgerald's defense, you got to go against Thomasville's defense. That's going to be tough if you're not balanced, like you said. Right. You've got to be able to run the ball and you've got to be able to throw the ball. Give the defense something else to work on. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Defense right now is not doing the job up there, the Hornets. Hornets, same thing like with Brookwood. They've got to be able to keep up with the scoring. Ball control, keep the ball out of the offense's hands on the other team. They're not doing that right now. Right. And that, that's going to be a problem. So, As we already see. You know, a quick fix? I don't know if there's a quick fix. I, I don't know if there's a quick fix at all, but we're going to have to wait and see what's going on. Another team in that region, I mentioned it earlier, Thomasville, they get back on the, the winning track here, going 1-5 and five Friday night, going into the night. They come out beating Berrien Friday night, going 2-5 and five in the season, 1-1 one and one now in the region. Thomasville beats Berrien 35-7. Good showing for Thomasville. Yes, definitely good showing for Thomasville. And now looking at them being 1-1 one one in the region, they're not out of it. No, not, not at all. They're not out of it at not all. Not at all. You know, they can still make the run here. They'll have some stiff competition, but... 
you know, they can still win this thing and, and be in the region championship. Well, that's not a region championship, well, well, but they can still be in the playoffs. In the playoffs, I'm sorry. Um, but, you know, that number four spot's wide open. I'm going to give Region 1, 2A is a fun region to watch. Brooks County's going to win it. They've already uh, beat Fitzgerald. Yeah, concede that. Which they beat Fitzgerald this last Friday night in one of the best games that everybody's still talking about right now here in, in the whole state of Georgia. They beat Fitzgerald 27-24, to 24, so they're in the driver's seat for the Region 1, um, 1-2A championship right now. Fitzgerald's going to make it. Cook's going to make it. That number four team is still up. With Thomasville beating Berrien this week, this Friday night, that gives them a big chance for that. Early County's still in there, too. That's the team you better watch out for. The game is going to, for that number four spot, it's going to come down to Early County and, and Thomasville right. at the end of the season. So that's going to be that's going to be huge coming up here in the next few weeks to see what happens. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to that Thomasville Early County game. And I don't know if they play this week or they play the next week after. I think I'm it's the, the next week, yeah. It's the next week. Yeah. So that's going, to be, that's going to be the game that's going to determine who's number four in this Region 1 2A classification. I have a question for you. Shoot. You think Valdosta would vote for Brooks being number one in that region? Oh, Valdosta already voted <laughs> Brooks being number one in that region. Valdosta, they, they voted big time for that. But, you know, it's funny because I got some polls that I read about. Calhoun up there in Atlanta is number one in Class 2A. Down, it depends on where you look because right. up there it's Calhoun. Down here it's Brooks County's number one. So it just depends on who the poll, which poll you're looking at. So it's going to be interesting to see if the GHSA comes out with a poll to where whether or not, you know, that would be cool. That would really be cool. Well, the coach's good. poll would, have, would be the big one, as I would like to see and see where they are. But I just haven't seen a, an overall coach's poll. If the coach's poll up there in Atlanta, Calhoun. Well, you know, you can throw the polls out because it's a playoff system. That's what's so great. Yes. That's what's so good about high school football. Not none of this BCS stuff, but we'll see how that goes here in the next few weeks. But let's talk about another team that's going to be in the region championship this year. And me and you have been on them all week, all year uh, long. Are we Miller sailing our County. flags? Oh. We're sailing our flags. I forgot my buddy. flag. <sighs> they traveled up to Randolph Clay, which is a very tough place to play. First of all, because of so many gnats. Second of all, it's just a good atmosphere up there. The people up there in, Cuth I think it's Cuthbert up there at Randolph Clay, uh, really get behind that team. And, you know, Coach Mc McFather up there is, has done a great job of getting this team ready this year. They had a little setback last week, but they were, I thought they would regroup this week, but not against the Pirates, baby. No, not against the Pirates. We're still pillaging. 4 to 20. Wow, is there a stage above pillaging? I don't know, but, but they ransacked. Yeah. Ransack. The pirate ship just cruised into Cuthbert last night and or Friday night and stinking took hold and didn't take any prisoners, did they? Well, I'm gonna look directly in the camera and tell the, tell this to the whole world. If the pirates are coming to your town, put the women and the children to bed. Okay. Big time. Miller County's having a great year. Coach Kill, uh, Killingsworth over there at Frank Killingsworth for Miller County has done a fantastic job getting this team ready to play this season. Not much coming back after last season. They lost a lot. Tiki Barber was one. Not Tiki, Tiki Barber. Barber. Yeah, Tiki Barber. He still has eligibility. He had eligibility. Wow. I got. I got to get these names right, man. I'm just getting everybody. They right. claim him off the Giants, Giants waiver. Yeah, but the uh, young Barber kid last year um, had. You know, they lost him, and he was right. their whole offense and defense last year. So to come back after the losing him and still have that nucleus of players, his offensive line is doing well. But I think the key this year for the Pirates has been their quarterback. Oh, he definitely. has done a fantastic job. Marvin Grant, running back for them, 176 yards with two scores for Miller County the other night. He was the leading rusher and leading scorer for the Pirates on Friday night. So They have to call him Mr. Grant now. Mr. Grant. Yeah, and I'm going to have to get a, get a T-shirt. So next week when, when we're on the air, I'm going to have to pull my T-shirt out. It's going to have Pirates on it. Miller faces Terrell County. They host it next week. We may have to do a little trip over there and do some highlights of that game just to go see how Miller County's doing. Definitely so. You know, we were there for the Miller County Metro game the second half. You know, somebody kicked them in the butt. Was it you going down there to say, hey, I got my pick on you this week? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we, we won't say what was said. I don't know if I can say those things on TV. Well, we'll keep that, yeah. you know, under the, under the camera, so to speak. Yeah. So, but Miller County having a fantastic year. Looking at this region right now, uh, you know, there's only been a couple of games that are played. There's still a lot of football left, but seeing what you're seeing right now, I think Miller's got this region. Let me think on that for a second. I have to agree with you. <laughs> Seminole County's doing good. They're starting to come back through. They're starting to get things picked up. 
we're hosting the last game of the season, November 2nd, for both of these teams, Miller County and Seminole County. The Border War down there, you can get it from me because I'm the one who trademarked it. They have the Border War down there between Miller County and Seminole County, and that is a ride. We'll have it here on the Cool Channels on November 2nd, but I think that determines region championship. But both of those teams are automatically going to go to the to, to playoffs. They're right. going to make the playoffs because of the new power rankings. They're both going to be up there. And we'll talk about the power rankings here in a little bit. We've got the new ones out as of Monday, October 15th. So we'll see where everybody stacks up right now. But Miller County and Seminole County are in as of today in that region, in that deal. For, so for the playoffs, the new playoff system, how they did it. It's going to be interesting to see how the rest of the season folds out. But I think Miller, Seminole, maybe Mitchell get into this. Because it's not so much where you stack up in the Final Four now in your regions. Right. It's where you stack up in the, in the power in the rankings. Power rankings. So that's what's going to, instead of 32 teams, it's 16 teams. The top 16 teams in that public school power ranking are going to go to the playoffs. You know, the plot thickens. It does. Yeah. It really does. And that's what's going to be interesting to see here coming up here in the next few weeks on where everybody falls in those power rankings. And it's the first year they've done it. Let's see if it works. Some coaches like it. Some coaches don't. But we're going to find out here at the end of the season. Yes, we will. No question about it. Let's take a quick break. We can regroup, catch our breath here on the Toyota Scoreboard Show, sponsored by Thomasville Toyota. So we invited kids from all over South Georgia and North Florida to come here to Thomasville Toyota, brought the TV cameras and let them roll. They had a ball. Check this out. Thomasville Toyota, where you drive home happy. Thomasville Toyota, the happy place. Thomasville Toyota, the happy place. Where you drive home happy. I'm ready to switch over to Farm Bureau Auto Insurance. Great. Wait, my old insurance agent is offering me a safe driver discount if I stay. We got you down for that. And a multi-line discount. That too. You know, some insurance companies don't give you your discounts until you try to switch, whereas we give you all the discounts you qualify for automatically. Awesome. Done. <laughs> Hey, hi. Your old agent? Yeah. Awkward. Real service, real people. That's Farm Bureau Insurance. Southwest Georgia Oil Company, located in Bainbridge, Georgia, operates under the trade name Inland. The goal of Inland is to be the largest independent oil company in the tri-state area of Georgia, Florida, and Alabama. Moving quickly toward that goal, Inland serves the local area in numerous ways through its distributors, Sammy's on the Faithful Highway, the Inland Store on West Shotwell Street, and in Donaldsonville on Highway 84, the self-service island on Calhoun Street. All you need is an Inland fuel card and the Inland Piggly Wiggly in Cairo. At Inland, we are proud to serve our local communities in southwest Georgia. Since 1953, Sharper Oil Company has been providing fuel to Southwest Georgia and North Florida. Sharper Oil is your complete full-service dealer for fuel, oil by the gallon or in bulk, grease, tanks, from 150 to 30,000 gallons, filters and related parts needs. Sharper Oil Company, 250 Wiggum Dairy Road in Bainbridge. Call today, 246-2183. Sharper Oil Fueling Stations are open 24-7, providing you with your fuel and lubricant needs with your Sharper Fleet Card. Sharper Oil Company, fueling your way to success. Welcome back, everybody, to the Toyota Scoreboard Show, sponsored by Thomasville Toyota. Bobby Latmore here along with Chris Guyton. And, Chris, I'll talk about the one team that we really wasn't a big surprise, except for the score. I thought they'd, you know, the other team would show up a little bit better. Right. It just made the one team that we're about to talk about, Thomas County Central, look fantastic because they didn't show up. They look – Thomas County Central, you know, I, I don't know if it's the level of the competition they played against, but – they, they look like they're clicking on all cylinders. Oh, I mean, you got to get 56 yeah. to nothing over Northside Columbus. And Northside Columbus was supposed to be a pretty good team. They fought, you know, Coco County beat them pretty good up there. Right. But they were supposed to have a couple running backs up there that were supposed to be pretty good coming out of Columbus. And they haven't even started to get the ball yet. I mean, right. I, didn't, I didn't, you know, from looking at the highlights of that game, they didn't show me anything. I mean, it looks like Coach Hurd put a, a, a great defense together and had a great game plan for them. I mean... To shut out a good Northside team, Thomas County Central's defense picked it up. Now, coming off a nice win against Bainbridge, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of people are still moaning and groaning about that, a lot of rumblings of what happened two weeks ago, but that's two weeks ago. This Friday, Thomas County Central showed up 56-0 over Northside of Columbus, 
big nights for uh, Mr. Choice and Mr. Cooksey. Are they still running? I think so. I think, I think they just ran by a few minutes yeah, ago. We, yeah, I was wondering what that flash was. <laughs> you know, Adam goes with 134 yards, three touchdowns. Cooksey goes for 136 yards and one touchdown. When these two get cranked up, that's, you can't, I don't think you can stop them. But here's, here's the other thing in that. If you have Adam with two touchdowns, Cooksey with one touchdown. Three touchdowns. I'm sorry, three touchdowns. Yeah. And Cooksey with one. Somebody else is scoring. Uh, big time. That, that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. So you're not thing. dependent on just your headliners to put points on the board. You know, fourth quarter, Coach Shavers did a good job of getting more kids experience, putting a lot of other kids into play, getting them a chance to play here in the 2012 season, which will benefit him later on, as all coaches love to do. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the other kids, they scored a bunch of points in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they, they did. You love to see your backups come in yes. and put points on the board. I mean, we don't know if, if Harris had the uh, – had their backups on the field, but if they did or if they didn't, you still like to see your backups. Absolutely. No question about it. I mean, in the fourth quarter, you know, you got names like Shaquille Coleman. We like him. We like him. Logan Potter. Coach's kid. Big time. And yeah. Tim Brown. Oh, Tim that's Br a great, is that Tim, not a great name? Oh, a great name. Tim Brown's a good kid, too. He's a good athlete. And, and Conley Wilhelm came in to kick. Another coach's kid. Coach's kid. kid. That uh, got a lot of experience there Friday night. So congratulations to the Yellow Jackets. I love to see these younger kids get in and perform just like you said. I mean, it started from the third quarter on. Right. And they got in there. And it was a good game played all the way around for the Yellow Jackets. Coming off, you know, the win, they won. 17-14, they won in overtime. Some say questionable. Well, you know what? Take all the questions out. It doesn't it's matter. It's still a W. It's still a W. It's still a W. They came back and they showed up the next week. Chris, somebody else didn't show up after that. You think they would come out and be just take it out on the next team they played? Bainbridge playing Harris County up there in Harris County. They they lose this game twenty-one seventeen. The, 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 I'm shocked. I am too. I, there's no words. I mean, there it, are no words. It's rare that you see a coach Pilcher coach team right come out in back-to-back -back weeks uh back-to-back -back games however you want to say it and just play like they've been defeated already before the game starts i mean the the bearcats were winning 17 to 14 starting the fourth quarter and they gave up the one touchdown but they could not answer it was a defensive battle again but that offense that harris county all defense shut down that bearcat offense for some reason Friday night, you know, they scored 17 points. That's been their average all season long, 17, right. 17. Right now, 17, 14, 17-point 17 area. You know, they had the one big win against uh, the team from Atlanta that came down a few, Westlake right. a few weeks ago. I mean, they scored the 40 points there, but or 35 points there, but they've got, they averaged 14, 17 points. They've only put up points against a team with no wins at that time. True. So when they played someone that was formidable, let's face it, the best part of Bainbridge's team right now is their defense. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll give you this about a, a Coach Pilcher coach team. If you go back to when he was at Thomas County, if his offense scored 17 points, he, he was won. Happy. He won. Because his defense held. Right, because defense was shutting people out, giving up three points a game. I mean, no one was going to score more than 14. And, you know, a close game with Harris County, of course, I thought it would be a little bit more blowout. Right. Bainbridge would go up there and just take Harris County down because Harris County was 1-4 and four on the season. Bainbridge was, you know, 2-3-2 and or three and two on the season. You know, 0-1 oh in the region. Let's talk about that here real quick before I was going to mention my other point. You know, that really hurts Bainbridge in this region. It changed the whole picture here we for are, that region. Here we are talking last week. They were both fighting for the region championship. Whoever lost would be number two in the region. With Bainbridge losing right now, that sets them 0-2 in the region. That's going to be tough Well, that's, to come that's back the from stage. in this region. That, that, that also, yeah, that's hard they to come back from. They may make the playoffs, but they may have to travel in the first round, which Coach Pilcher, I know, does not want to do. No. So uh, that's, that's something that's big. Cameron McDowell, that's the name we were talking about earlier in the first <clears throat> part of it. Cameron McDowell took the second quarter kickoff 20, down to the 29-yard line. After a couple plays, Bowie ran it in for 33 yards, which gave him the 17 points um, of the game. So I, I'm shocked. I don't know what to say about this. I'm trying to read stats. I'm trying to figure out what happened in this game. But I just, I'm shocked. 
I really and still, the, the offense. You know, you know how they scored. Harris County scores in the fourth quarter on a fumble. Bainbridge fumble with 423 left in the game. Harris County took over the fumble, drove it a couple times, had two or three play drive, scored a touchdown, made him go up 21-17. But you still had four minutes left in the game. You know you're still not a quick-hitting offense, but you can have a four-minute drive that you can just sustain to get down that field. Right. They couldn't do it. You know, I, I, when we look at Bainbridge's offense, after they had their, their big victory against the, the school from the north, everyone kept saying, oh, their offense is back now. Right. Well, I had been saying it the whole time. I don't think that's the case at all. Right. And I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a problem with the system. I just think they don't have the athletes on offense right. to make that offense click. Well, I agree with you and don't agree with you. They've got, I think they've got people there. I think the switching of a round of some people, I don't think Bowie's comfortable in that quarterback spot as of yet, but you're right about that. But, you know, they, don't, they really don't have anybody they can throw to right. consistently. Bowie's not a thrower. You have to bring Preston Norris in to come in and throw the ball, and when he comes in, you know it's a passing play. You set up defensively for that. Exactly. You're not, you're not surprising anybody with this. Is that, I mean, that, that I, I'm just shocked. I really am shocked that the Bearcats lost this week. I can't say enough about them. I, I mean, uh, I still think, and it's obvious, offense, offense, offense. When your defense is playing as great as they well. are, holding yes. teams, you know, under 14 points, uh, and what do you do? You know, it, one thing, you know, about this game that, you know, we talked about at the beginning of the season. We haven't talked about much of it ne- uh, since, you know, uh, after like week four, we, have, we got away from it a little bit, but the turnovers, yeah. takeaways, giveaways, however you guys want to call it. But, uh, you know, Bainbridge has four in this game, which cost them two touchdowns. And the, and the last one cost them dearly. Dearly. Um, it, it, you, you cannot, when you're away, especially when you travel up there, as far away as they went, they went two and a half hours just north of Columbus to Harris County. That was, that's a trip and a half. When you go into someone's backyard, you cannot, you got to almost play perfect, perfect football that night. Harris County took advantage of mistakes. That's a long, quiet bus ride on the way back. That's the only thing bad about it. <laughs> you know, yeah. going there, hey, that's all right, we're ready to play. If you lose a game like this, four turnovers, you're in trouble. You really are in trouble. I'm just shocked. I cannot believe the Bearcats lost. I was expecting them to, you know, host. We host the first game this year, but now they're in we, trouble of hosting. We were talking about Bainbridge being number two in the region, you know, all year long. Yeah, all year long. And for this to happen, what a huge setback! Zero and two in the region right now. They're three and three overall. It's going to see. It'd be interesting to see what Bainbridge does because they've got a long road to hoe uh, coming up here in the next couple of weeks. So Damian Bowie had. Um, a good game for them, but one thing about Bainbridge that you probably don't know about, or maybe you do know about since your cousin's over there as the offensive coordinator, Terry Lewis didn't get to see much playing time. Is he hurt? Is there an issue with uh, disciplinary action? Because he didn't play until the fourth quarter. I'm going to have to get on the phone to find out. We need to find that yeah. out because I'm interested to find out why Terry Lewis didn't play in the fourth quarter. That may be a real issue why that offense didn't work. Right, and it sounds like a disciplinary action. If I know from, from what history tells us about Coach Pilcher and Coach Guyton, that's probably a disciplinary action. You know, and if your kids are watching out there, you know, why? why? Why do something that, you know, you're in the middle of a big race, you're in the middle of playoffs, you're in the middle of a football season, why? Yeah. You know, it's that simple. Why? Ask yourself that question before you do it or you find yourself in a situation. Why? Stop thinking about I and think about team. It's no question about it. If it was a disciplinary, hopefully it was an injury related to where they were going to hold, try to hold him out one week to where they just said they needed him in the fourth quarter and he tried to come back and he didn't do very, you know, he was, he was trying to rough it out. You know, good for him. Good for him to say, hey, I can try to help out here. But to not play him until the fourth quarter, that was a main issue of that offense. He's, their, he's been their lifeblood, you know, with Bowie going to quarterback. You, all had, you had Lewis now in the backfield. No one could stop Terry. I mean, Central had a rough time stopping both of them. Yeah, and here's the the other part of that picture is now Bainbridge is in a position, well, they have to fight out for this last spot. Oh, it's amazing. I don't know. There's no giving for them anymore. I'm about to throw my paper up in the air because I'm like, uh, 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 uh. I saw that score Saturday morning because we had it all night. We had had the score at Mm 17-14. 
all the way through the fourth quarter, and I said, well, good, Bainbridge has got this. You know, it was a little closer than I thought. Here's another 17-14 game Bainbridge is in. Right. Again. But then we, I, I, I read the paper Saturday morning. I was, I, I, I'm still shocked. Here we are filming Tuesday morning. I still don't have words for this game. I mean, when I heard it on the, on the radio driving back after the game, I was like, wait a second. That- well, they got it wrong on the radio. They said Bainbridge initially, had right. won. Initially, initially they, they had said, it, yeah. listening on the radio coming home, as we always listen to, you know, the Tommy Palmer report every Friday night after the game. I do. Yeah. Tommy's a great guy. He's been around GHSA football for how many, I don't forget how many years, 27 years now. And he's done a fantastic job of giving these scores out. He got, I mean, and there's a couple times where he gets called in to some scores and his producer takes down that name, whether or yeah. not he does it, listens to it right or whatever. But Bainbridge won the game, and I was like, all oh, right. So we're driving along, got along. And Saturday morning, I woke up, and I choked on my donut. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe Bainbridge lost this game. And I was going to call Coach Guyton that morning, and I'm glad I did. Yeah, I yeah, think that would not have been a good days, phone call. Maybe yeah. a week. Yeah. After they let them win their next game? Yeah, I'll call them after that. So we'll see what happens after that. So hopefully they'll come back. Hey, they need to bounce back. There's a lot of a lot of football left to be played in that region. So, But, man, shocker, shocker, shocker here in southwest Georgia. Yeah. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll run down some state rankings along with some power rankings here in southwest Georgia. your workout. It's convenient and it's open 24 hours a day. Follow your dreams, find your passion here at Fitness Life. At Farm Credit, our roots run deep in this rich Georgia soil. We are the nation's leading provider of credit to farmers and farm businesses. And we know what it takes to grow your business. We've closed more loans on the hood of a pickup truck than some bankers will in a lifetime. We're proud of our history. Prouder still to finance the dreams of farmers, landowners, and agribusinesses. We're Farm Credit. We're here to help you grow. everybody to the Toyota School Board Show sponsored by Thomasville Toyota. Bobby Latmore here along with Chris Guyton on the dealership floor of Thomasville Toyota. I'm telling you what, it is busy here this morning. We have people walking by laughing yeah. at us because we're making so many mistakes. But you know what, that's part of being having fun here on the show. I think so, that kid uh, is still laughing at us. He is still. I'm yeah, going to have yeah. to go get him yeah. here in a minute. But uh, little comments being thrown by the little ones coming around here. So we'll go take care of him after the show. Coming after you. 
So we'll see. But uh, a lot of fun. Everybody's having a good time. A lot of business here today. Yes, they, they, a lot of folks that will be driving home happy today. They're driving home happy is right here at Thomasville Toyota. But let's talk about some state rankings. The only team in southwest Georgia right now that is in the state rankings in the top ten, according to the some powers of the polls, to be. The, the powers to be, wherever you know the polls are from, Central at number in 5A is number six. Good job for Thomas County Central. They remain hot up there right now. Of course, number one is Northside. Yeah, that's... Warner Robins. So they're always they're always up there as well. Stevenson, East Paulding, uh, Martin Luther King, Gainesville, Thomas County Central, Tucker, Kell, Lee County. You said it. Lee County and Altoona. Altoona is number ten. A game to watch for, and this may be the game of the region. Both teams, especially Lee County, right now seven and zero. Thomas County Central six and one. What what are we doing Friday night? Are we um, going, are we going up to uh, Leesburg? Yes, we're we're gonna head up nineteen, and um, then we're gonna hit yeah we're gonna hit all points in between. But we're gonna make sure we stop right there in Leesburg. Thomas County Central and Lee County facing off on a huge Region One Five A matchup up here in Leesburg next Friday night. The Cool Channels will be there with one of the games of the week. That may be the game of the week next Friday night. I mean, that, that game is, that's like the playoffs before the playoffs. You know, let me ask you a question. You know, Lee County is a wide open offense. They've got two quarterback system up there right now throwing at least 300 yards a game. Can Central stop that? It will stress Coach Hurd out. He might have a little, a few sleepless nights coming up here soon. But do I think that Central can, can pull this off defensively? I think so, but this, it's going to depend on their front four. Right. How much pressure can their front four get? Exactly. And the one quarterback is not very mobile, but the other one's kind of a dual threat. So it's going to be interesting to see what Coach Fabrizio does up there at Lee County this Friday night against a very good Yellow Jacket team. But make sure you tune in for the Friday night huddle next Tuesday night to hear about everything we talk about in this game. Yes. And it's going to be a big one up there in Lee County. So I'm excited about it. We're going to head up there in Leesburg this Friday night, and we're going to take care of business up there as the Trojans from Lee County take on Thomas County Central. We talked about state power rankings earlier in the show. Let's go down the recent state power rankings for classification A in the public school systems on the public school side of where they fall into. Remember now, it's been split this year in the private and public so that the, you'll have a private championship and you'll have a public championship coming in this year to classification A here in Georgia. And right now, Heading, looking down the list, you're going to take the first 16 teams in the power rankings to fall in there. And right now in Region 1, 14 is Miller County, 15 is Seminole County. Hmm. They make it, but they make it as the last part of the next to the last two teams in the power rankings for this playoff system setup. Mitchell County is all the way down at 22, so they've got to do a lot to pick it up here to get back up top above that 16 range to make it to the playoffs. Right, but with them climbing up, somebody's got to get bumped out. Somebody's got to get bumped out, and there's a few of them in here that, you know, Dooley County is obviously the number one. Lincoln County strong. Charlton County always up there very strong. Commerce, Hancock Central, Irwin County, Turner County, Emanuel County Institute comes in at number seven. Gordon Lee is number eight. Wilcox County is, is uh, number 10. Marion County. Greenville, Clinch County, mm -hmm. you know, both those teams beat Clinch County earlier in the season. Yeah. And Clinch County right now is on top. Interesting how these power rankings are working out right now. Uh, there's Miller, there's Seminole, and Treon comes in tied with Seminole at number 15. There's your 16 teams right now in classification A that would make the playoffs if you separated it today. A lot of football still has to be played, though, but it's going to be interesting to see doesn't matter if you're region champs anymore. It no. really matters where the power rankings are now. And one thing about that is, how do you feel about that? You know, it reminds me of the BCS system. Because you can say, oh, this team is better than this team. This team is better than this team. Well, why not just put them on the field and let's play it out? And that's exactly how the Georgia High School, uh, uh, High School Association has been doing it for the so many years they've been involved in this. But this last year with the new cla reclassifications and the, and the issues with Class A, some of the teams were you know, threatening to go start their own league if something wasn't done. This is what they came up with. 
whether it's good or not, we're going to find out this year because I think there's going to be a lot of teams left out. Somebody's going to be standing out in the cold. That should have been in the playoffs. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Yeah. Because now you have the private schools sector and you have the public schools section in this whole playoff system. Does, is it fair? No. I, I, I don't think so either. No, so, it's not. And don't get Roger started on this because Roger will spend you know a whole hour on this show. He's got it. Where's the race? An opportunity to, absolutely. Chris, let's talk about some highlights of the week, some of the top players that happened that I want to mention that had good weeks this week for um, Southwest Georgia high schools that we cover here on the Cool Channels. We mentioned JTE Door. Right. Westwood, 42 nothing over Sherwood. Nine for 156 yards, four touchdowns for that young man up there for the Wildcats. Marvin Grant from Miller County, running back. We saw him play before, 42-20 victory over Randolph Clay. He had 16 carries for 176 yards and two touchdowns. Cal King, I'm going to give some props to Cal King. Not for throwing the ball. Cal <gasps> King, six carries for 105 yards rushing, two touchdowns, and the win over Barry in 35-7. And, of course, we can't forget to mention Mario Cherry over there. Oh, no, Mario Cherry. Come on now, 10 carries for 154 yards and a touchdown. Congratulations to the Bulldogs. Most of that getting, was in the warm-up. Yeah, that was big time. Yeah. You know, congratulations to the Bulldogs for getting that win in that region and gives, keeping their uh, playoff hopes still alive over there. Of course, choice. DeAndre Choice and Adam Cooksey, yeah. as we deemed them to call them because they're interchangeable. Uh, Adam coming up with 15 carries, 134 yards, three touchdowns, and their 56 0 win over Northside Columbus. DeAndre Cooksey, 13 carries for 136 yards and a touchdown. And then we mentioned the other kids earlier. Congratulations to you guys for getting in and doing contributing over there. And let's not forget PJ Davis, running back for Cairo, three touchdowns in the first half. 35 nothing in the first half over there over Worth County, Cairo, at, in West Thomas Stadium last Friday night over there. So PJ's just doing on both sides of the ball. He's amazing. He slices, he dices, he purees. Uh, you know, I'm waiting yeah. for him to kick off one time. If Coach yeah. Falaw will let him kick off one time, he'll play every position on the field. Didn't, didn't we see him with the band at halftime? Yeah, I think he did. He was yeah. leading the band, and he was also homecoming king. Yeah. So, you know, he's done it all over there for Cairo. So it's, it's great to see PJ and how he does. He's a great kid. And we wish him all the best in the future. But that's a look at your top players for the week. Remember, if you've got a top player that you want to nominate to be on the show each week, make sure to call us here or email us here at the Sports Zone. There's a website uh, underneath that you can see the replay of the Sports Zone each week here on the Toyota Scoreboard Show. Um, anything final notes here? We good? I think we're good. I'm going to have to call Jesse to make sure he's not in depression, oh, you know, of the whole oh, bacon thing. we got to call him make sure he didn't commit Harry Carey or something. Yeah. Uh, he's, yeah. That one loss victory, I mean, he was ready. And, and Roger's going to get him next Friday night. He may oh, not, yeah. He may not want to go up there with Roger. We may not have Roger because we got two games of the week next week. Roger may be going up to He might be on week. special assignment. He may be on. Roger may be on special assignment next week. But we'll see. We'll figure it out and have a good time. Good to see you, my friend. Good to have you back on the show. Always good to be back on set. I mean, look look at this place. Look Can't at this place. It. It's, you know, it's it's a lot of fun. And you were here the night we did the Friday night huddle over on the other side over there. Yeah, too, we, we got to be over there in the nice, cushy lounge and everything. That was really comfortable. I'm spoiling you. I know. I know. You know what would make it even better? What's that? If they would let us take like a Sequoia to Leesburg, that would be excellent. Well, they give us this van. They give, know, us the Toyotas, they, they give us the Toyota the van. The van is nice. You've seen nice. the van. You've the, seen the van at all the games. We've got it parked out where everybody can see it right there when you walk in. So you know where we're there every every Friday night. You do they see the Toyota van. They're going to give us the van and the chauffeur? The oh, I don't know about the chauffeur. Oh. We, we'll have to try we'll to negotiate to that next time. About chauffeur. Maybe Exum can take us as a chauffeur. You never yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we always appreciate everything Thomasville Toyota does. It's busy. It is absolutely busy in here. Come in here to Thomasville Toyota, and I'm going to do a little commercial form right now and get your best deal around for any kind of vehicle that you're looking for. Bobby Latmore, along with Chris Guyton, we're the Toyota Scoreboard Show, sponsored by Thomasville Toyota. We will see you next week here on the Cool Channels.